and we are coming into a very, very large herd of beefalo. I thought for an instant the migration has arrived, but it has not. Look at this vast, vast herd. Let me stop. Well, I'll stop just about in the middle of it, and then you'll get an impression of its extent. I think there are about 250 animals here. Ooh, and there's some Irland as well. Let us begin here, Sins, and we'll just pan around, and then I'll show you the Irland. And in case every so often I park badly, like right now, and you get that pole in the picture, that's because I've parked like an idiot, but we have to have the pole because we have to have a roof on in the Mara. And um, while it's not particularly the most film-friendly thing, it is great for shade, I must tell you, and with sunlight we have here, very important. I'm not sure why these buffalo have decided they're so terrified. We might see lions come chasing across the plains after them. Hang on. What is chasing across there? Just more buffalo. I think they're just scared of us. I don't see anything else that it could be. Rudy, you say, do the animals here ever get close to the vehicles? They do, Rudy. But just remember, I mean, when you say, do the animals get close to the vehicles, they, I know exactly what you mean, because it feels a little bit like the animals at Juma, for example, are much closer than they are here to the vehicles. That is often the case, and it's for two reasons. One, there's much l less stringent off-road driving protocols there. Not less stringent, but uh, more well-defined. Because it's a private reserve, uh, it's much more easily controllable, and so, you know, there is a little bit more off-road driving. Something is going on here. This is fantastic. I just can't see why they should be running, because there's nothing actually behind them. Isn't that great? Gee, that's a great shot. That is beautiful. Um, Ruti, so the other part of your question is that, so where, and I will, I'm going to drive into the middle of this herd if I can. Um, you will find that we can get pretty close to them in that way, uh, as close often as we can in the South Sand. I've just got to move off the road here, I'm afraid, sorry. There's another car behind us. Um, but also, so, I mean, the point of what I'm saying to you is that often we are approaching the animals in the Sabi sand, it's not the other way around. Hi. Carry on. Go for it. Everyone is a bit surprised by our camera, you see. Being very polite. So I hope that answers your question. Certainly, I mean, I've been cl as close to lions as I have in the Sabi Sands over here. Uh, but, you know, unless it's a really special sighting, we won't go off-road for it. And because you can see so much more clearly, it's often not necessary. And so I suppose that does result in a very different feeling from the one that you've just had while you're watching those in Kuhumas. I can imagine that you were parked probably within 10 meters of them. I'd love to know why these things were running. Anyway, let's have a look around there. I mean, this is, it's more than 200 strong, this herd. It's still coming. And it was right around here, everybody, that I last saw the great scar face last year. Hmm. Good. Samson, you say are the horns of these buffalo different from the ones uh, at Juma? Uh, they're not, certainly the bulls here are bigger. They're definitely bigger and they've got much wider spaced horns. 
but otherwise they're pretty much identical. I mean, you'd never, it'd be difficult. If you put a, if you put a Sabi sand buffalo into the middle of this herd, you wouldn't notice the difference. Yeah, now we're right in the middle of the herd. No more than 10 meters or 15 meters from some of them. And of course the other thing is that because we do do so much off-road driving at a place like Juma in the Sabi sand, the animals become that much more used to us being that much closer to them. And so their fight and flight response is modified accordingly. <laughs>